Okay. Uh, so we're going to look at Israeli music history in Avi Matzmaut, and what I'm going to be doing is taking um, three specific uh, musicians, which you may recognize most, if not all. Um, Naomi Shemer, of course, on the top left of my screen. The bottom is is um, Ari Einstein, as I'm sure you've heard. And top right, you may or may not know who that is. I'm just curious, do you know who that is? No. Okay. Uh, his name is Naftali Hertz Imber. Um, and we're going to talk about the three of them um, and, and their specific, uh, I guess, roles that they've had in, in Israeli music, which is, which is very profound. Uh, you might be more familiar with two of them, Naomi Shemer and Eric Einstein. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that, but uh, Naftali Hertz Imber actually is someone who, once I tell you who he is, it'll be, uh, you'll understand uh, why I'm, I'm talking about him. Uh, and these are, again, these are... I had a feeling. This is based on a class. Yeah, as you can see, he wrote the words uh, for Hatikva. Uh, he was the poet. Uh, he was born um, um, in Ukraine, 1856, eight, uh, in 1909. And he actually it was an interesting character. Um, he was a little bit of a, as I say, a kind of a shady character, kind of a, I don't say like a low life type of guy, but he was he was certainly interesting and certainly had his uh, his personality. Um, he was, um, at the age of 10, he began writing poetry. And in 1882, he moved to Palestine um, as the secretary uh, to Sir Lawrence Oliphant. And he was working in Palestine for a while. Now, uh, I always talk about, the, I always talk about here with the kids that he was a Jewish poet and a Zionist. And of course, I asked the kids, well, what's a Zionist? Of course, no one knows what it is. And they give me some very clever answers and things that are really cute when first graders, you know, try to answer. Um, and I always say a Zionist, I said, you're a Zionist and your parents are a Zionist and I'm a Zionist and my parents are a Zionist and this is a Zionist school. And I say a Zionist is someone who believes in the idea that the Jewish people should have their own Jewish homeland in the land of Israel and not anywhere else, right? So not in California, not in Australia, but in Israel, right? And that's a Zionist. Oh, that's what a Zionist is. I said, anyone ever hear that word before? No, 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 no. <laughs> so, all right, they, they forget it when they leave the class they forget it but at least maybe some point down the line they'll hear that word and maybe it'll trigger a memory for them so i always talk so i talk about that and i say naftali hurt zimber he was a zionist right he very much believed in the idea of a state of israel um and he got a chance to travel there but it wasn't a state of israel it was palestine it was not under the control of um of of israel and he always had this dream. He had this hope, and he and he wrote a poem about it, right? And the poem he wrote is called Hatikva, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, in 1887, he actually returned from Europe. Uh, he returned from Palestine and went to Europe. Uh, and then 1892, actually made his way uh, back to the U.S. And it actually ended his life, and he died um, at a hospital in New York City. Um, he died of alcoholism, actually. Um, and I think... He yeah. lived part of the time, sorry, he, he lived, I, I feel like I'm not interrupting anybody but you. No, 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 please go right ahead. <laughs> I think he lived part of the time in Rishon Etzion, and uh, there's a yeah. museum there that has a room and it shows the bed that he slept in. And That's cool. I didn't know that. That's whole, interesting. Yeah. And the whole poem was bigger than what we have now as a national Oh, yeah, era. yeah. Yeah, what we have, I'm going to play actually the whole poem for you. Um, it's a it's a shortened version. It's just um, it's like the national anthem, American national anthem. Is the you know Francis Scott Key wrote this long poem based on his observations that he saw eyewitness accounts of the battle before McHenry, wow. uh, and wow. we only we only take the first paragraph of it, but it's actually a much longer poem. So Hatikva, it's the same uh -huh. thing. Um, was was Hatikva, Was it? It was written as a poem. Not there was no music involved. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about the music, actually, also. So this is, he wrote just the music. This is just, just the music. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, just the this words. is just the words. This is right. just the words. Um, this is just the words that he wrote, uh -huh. um, which I'm going to get. And we're going to get to the music separately, because that's a whole separate, it's an interesting story also uh, with the music. Um, but he wrote this whole long poem. Uh, and again, with the idea of understanding of this hope, this tikva that he had, that one day Israel would be its own country under its own, uh, sovereignty uh, being run and controlled by Jews. Uh, this is what he. This is what he had envisioned, and this was his hope. And then he and he wrote this. Uh, he wrote this poem. Um, he. Uh, this is, by the way, his obituary uh, that was in the New York Times um, in 1909. Uh, 
Um, and, and you can actually look up the, um, the actual obituary. It just says the poet of Zion suffers paralysis and of Telly Hertz Imber, beloved by his people in, on the east side. He was, uh, he was on the, yeah, I forget which hospital, but it was on the east side of Manhattan. Uh, dying in a hospital, he wrote in classic Hebrew his Hatikva, the Zionist hymn, is sung by Jews all over the world. Um, he was buried in Queens, actually, in the same cemetery that, uh, in the Montefiore Cemetery, uh, which is, I believe is where the Ohel is, Lubavitcher Rebbe is buried. Uh, but, but in 1953, he was, um, he was moved to Har Menuchot, and, um, and that's where his uh -huh. final resting place is, which is Har, uh, Har Menuchot. Um, so th this is what, so he wrote the poem. Wait, and also, so it says, what, this was when he was dying, or when he died, so it's already sung by Jews as a, as a, yeah, as so, a song. So, so he, yeah. he, he already knew it as a song as well. He already right. knew it as a song. So the question is, right, so the melody, as you're going to see, was put to it uh, very, uh, you know, a while ago. Um, in other words, he wrote the poem, and, well, Samuel Cohn in 1888, actually, is the man who's given credit mm -hmm. for the music. But I want to uh -huh. talk a little bit about the music because uh, it's it's um it's very it's it's very interesting actually, um, and I'm gonna you know I'm just gonna do it like this. I think it's easier for me to do it like this. Um, so you can still see my screen, right? You can see the screen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Okay, good. Um, okay, so he is giving he wrote it. Um, and by the way, uh, a little piece of interesting information which I did not know until I did some research on a little while ago, when I was you know preparing this for the kids. Do you have any idea when the Hatikva became the official anthem of the state of Israel? No. no. Yeah, I was shocked when I heard when I read this. Uh, it wasn't until uh, November of 2004. 2004. What? Yeah, November. <laughs> it's been sung. It's been sung for years and years and years. But officially, huh? officially as the as the Israeli anthem Hatikva, not till November oh. 2004. That's, That's amazing. Crazy. Yeah, it, it I really, bet most people don't know that. Yeah. No, it blew my That's mind when I read that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, all right, let's talk about the music. So the music is interesting. Um, and as you're going to see, also similar with Naomi Shemer, when I get to her, um, it wasn't necessarily hers. And this wasn't necessarily Samuel Cohen. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me explain. Uh -huh. um, La Montavana, a 16th century song composed by the Italian tenor Giuseppe Sensei. Um, I want to play this for you right now, and then you'll see where I'm going with this. All right, so this is this song, this melody written in the 16th century by an Italian composer. Um, take a listen. Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. It's low. A little. So this might sound familiar to you. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah. It's very similar. So I'm going to stop it there for a second. So you can hear the similarity. So this actually, so this song, which was written in the 16th century, um, seem to have also been around. In other words, that the person who wrote this song uh, may have heard it even somewhere before this, because I can tell you that this Birch HaSatal by Rabbi Yitzchak Bar in the 1326 to 1408 um, has this melody, actually, or similar melody to his Birch Now, 
Now this is a very Gregorian chant sounding, and this is even older as you're gonna <laughs> as you're gonna hear. Um, so take a listen. Hopefully the sound is a little bit better. Take a listen to this. Yeah, it was very low. Can you hear this? Actually, you know, I'm gonna try, hang on, let me do a, a, a setting shift. This might make it a little bit better. Give me one second here. Sure. Uh, realize that, uh, hang on, let's see. Okay. Tell me if this is better. Is that a little better? No, no don't, don't hear, it. hear it at all. You don't hear it at all? Okay, no. so forget that. All right, sorry. All right, let me go back. To that. <laughs> sorry. You know, this tech, don't love technology. All right. Um, all right. Can you hear that? Yeah. It's not, okay, it's fine. not. Right, so, fine. It's not, it's not loud. All right. It, well, it's I'm loud, sorry. but one sorry. second. Can I make it louder? Um, you might, yeah, if you can make your speakers louder, that might work. Yeah, let's oh, see yeah. if we can. All right. It's all right, as loud as it gets. All right, I'm going to move yeah, back. Try it again. again. All right, here we go. Yeah, the beginning is very So this this chant, this chant, very similar, obviously. So this chant is even older than what I played for you just now, before. So the melody, it's it's an old melody. Um, so where it actually but, came, yeah, go ahead. How do, how do they know that this was the melody? In other words, this was recorded November 9th, 2012, I see. Right. So this has just come down as a tradition in- just, Yeah, this, some kind of tradition from what I understand, it just, Someone took it, put it together, made the video in 2012, but uh, for whatever reason, the person who did it must have understood. And I've read this also, uh, someone who presented to me, I learned it from also, that this melody, uh, this melody, it was Goes a back. kind of famous melody or different variations of it. That it's a very old melody. And mm -hmm. the one from the 16th century, uh, you can see how it kind of modifies and changes over time. People take a little bit and they kind of work it and change it and work it. Yeah, and Right. Um, you know, which is kind of what people do today. They take old melodies and they kind of redo them, uh, make newer versions of them. Right. I realized, I realized, by the way, I forgot to share with you the actual full poem of the Tikva. I'll do that after this. Um, so that's, so that is this, but what's interesting is, so I want to go back to here because now Samuel Cohen, uh, Samuel Cohen is the person who gets the credit, um, for the melody? Uh, for the, the melody of Hatikva. And oh, okay. what's interesting is, um, is that he did not uh, come up with it on his own, uh, obviously. He, um, he put it to music in 1888, and he recalled many years later that he had hummed Hatikva based on the melody from the song he had heard in Romania. So he basically uh -huh. remembered a children's song uh, as a kid uh -huh. that he took it from. So I want to play that for you right now. Wait, where did he live, Samuel Cohen? Same, uh, same area, same around the same area in Romania. He was in Romania. You know Romania. That, that part, yeah. All right. right. So this is no, it. This is this is the poem. Uh, this is the melody that he remembers as a kid. This is a children's song that he used to sing when he was a kid. Uh huh. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's it. It is. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Now, when I play this for the kids, they start cracking up because they're laughing at the language. They don't understand the language. You know? <laughs> they think it's funny and they're cracking up. But, right. you know, so the point is, obviously, is this is a children's song that has been adapted from melodies that came, as I showed you, from many years before. Samuel Cohen, when he was putting the music to Hertz Imber's poem, he uh -huh. consciously or unconsciously remembered this melody and he put the music to it. And as you know, this, yeah. is, this has become the Hatikva uh, that mm. we know. Um, cool. It's just, like, sorry. Go ahead, go, go, yeah. go. No, like Twinkle Twinkle to Mozart's, uh, right. Uh, right. you know, right. Dikaina, whatever. The, right, exactly right. The, exactly and, right. Uh, the two other, you know, Twinkle Twinkle, ABC. And, uh, now, one of, one of my personal pet peeves as a musician is, is when, when, when musicians are not original in their own music. In other words, you know, they've, they come up with songs that become hits but they're actually mm -hmm. melodies that come from other places that no one recognizes or understands or realizes and therefore doesn't put mm -hmm. two and two together. Uh, right. If you know the song Hashem Melech, Hashem Melech, Hashem Ma, yeah. he completely yeah. stole that. He completely yeah. stole that. Um, it is, uh, it is um, I'm blanking on his name, uh, Spanish singer. Um, it's his song. And if you listen to the Spanish singer's version of that song, it's completely identical, practically. So uh, like, like one of my own personal words. Oh, no, of course, different, no, different words, of course. The melody, yeah, the melody is yeah, talking yeah, about the music. The so right. one, of, one of my personal pet peeves when people do that, it, does, it shows no originality. In other words, you know, <clears> real, <throat> people who can really, Yisha Rebo, I believe, as far as I know, it's all original. That's, that's music. That's original, whether you like it or not. But he's coming up with his own melodies. You know, that's, that's, mm -hmm. what, I, uh, that's what I like. Hang on. Uh, well, it should at least be acknowledged that it's another uh, yeah, Absolutely. So, right. So yeah. when it's not acknowledged, and by the way, um, uh, what's his name? Who did Hashem Melech? He was sued for it, by the way. He, he was oh. sued for it. Um, again, I don't know what happened as a result. But, uh -huh. um, Mark, well, I... Mark, oh, Mark Anthony. They, Mark Anthony is the, is the singer. Mark Anthony, if you heard of him or not, is the Spanish singer whose song he stole. Whatever. It happens all over the place. Like many <laughs> musicians do it. Sometimes you get caught. Sometimes you don't. Um, mm -hmm. But... Anyway, so, okay, so, but, so when I teach the kids about Hatikva, and I always do it in first grade because this is, again, part of my curriculum, and we always sing Hatikva in school, that, and I, I explained to them, I said, so these are the words, this is the melody, this is where it came from. Now, how do we sing Hatikva? How are we supposed to sing it? Are we moving around, jumping around? Are we talking? Are we being silly? Of course not. And I explained to them, um, I explained to them, you know, it, what, what's an, first of all, what's an anthem? We talk about what an anthem is, and it's a serious, it's a song that represents the country, Right, talks about what the country is all about, and it and it uh, it deserves a certain kavod, a certain respect when you sing when you sing an anthem, whether you're in in Canada, wh wherever you are, and you hear it, you stand at attention, your hands are by your side, in front or behind you, right? You're not goofing around, right? So we, you know, I try to explain that as well to the kids. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. so that kind of is in a nutshell, I guess, um, Hatikva and Naftali Hertz Imber, uh, who was an interesting character. Uh, it was his poem. That are the words uh, Samuel Cohn, I don't want to say stole the music, but I guess maybe he did steal the music, uh, for the Hatikva as we know it today. And, well, he, uh, he gave it an extra life. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Good way of, good way, exactly, good way of saying it. Gave it an extra life. No, All right. Let me ask you, um, yeah. David, do you know about the life of Imber? I mean, you said he was sort of a low life. I'm just wondering, his, his um, you know, where, where was that, where was the inspiration from? Well, um, for I mean, for his writing, the, well, he, he was, a, he was the, a good writer. He was a prolific writer. Again, he began at, at a very early age writing poetry. Um, so, but this very, beautiful words, and, and it's heartfelt. It, it sort of gives expression to what we feel. Mm -hmm. And he must have felt that. Where did he get that yearning? That's a great you know, question. I, I, that I don't know. I can't answer that. Um, I don't know. But you're right. He did have that feeling inside of him enough to write this poem, enough to write right. this 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 mm -hmm. poem that went on to 
really describe his own personal feelings about how he felt towards Israel and, and, and Jewish people and there being a land of Israel. So that's a great question, Maury. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. Uh, I can try, certainly try to figure that out uh, and do some yeah. research if I can. But that's, I actually never yeah. thought of that, but that's a good, that is a good question. Um, uh, mm-hmm. All right, so we are going to move on now to Naomi Shemer, who, uh, as, uh, as you know, is one of the most famous, if not the most famous Israeli songwriter uh, singer. Um, she uh, was born in 1930 and died in 2004, was a leading Israeli musician and songwriter, hailed as the first lady of Israeli song and poetry. And her song, Yushalayim Shel Zahav, which we're going to focus on a little bit right now, was written in 1967, became an unofficial second anthem after Israel won the Second Day War uh, when, and reunited Yerushalayim. Yes. Now to say second anthem, now I'm thinking uh, it wasn't even the anthem. Well, uh, <laughs> funny, funny. So they're actually, when this came out, many Israelis had actually wanted this song to become the anthem. Right. Um, but yeah. it did not. And for those who are just joining, oh. hello, Elaine, <laughs> hello, how are you? I was saying that uh, we just learned about Hatikva. And, and that what many people don't know is that Hatikva only officially became the Israeli national anthem in November of 2004. That's when it officially became the anthem in November 2004. Anyway, so Naomi Shemer, um, she wrote Yushalayim Shel Zahav. Uh, she was commissioned by Mayor Teddy Kalik in 1967 uh, to write this song for the Israeli Song Festival. Uh, which she was not participating in. She wasn't competing, but Teddy Kalik had asked her to write this song. And it was sung for the first time, uh, May 15, 1967, um, when, or, or for this Israeli film, for this Israeli song festival. And as a matter of fact... May, before, May 1967. Yes, so May 1967. Wow. Before, before. The Six Day War came out, what happened three really? weeks after the song was debuted. And from what I from what I am able to understand, she actually did not debut the song herself, uh, but rather she had, rather she had, uh, Shuli Natan, uh, who was really a kind of a no name uh, singer at the time. But for whatever reason, Naomi Shemer had asked her uh, to be the one to sing uh, the song, to kind of debut the song, Yushalayim uh, Shel Zahav. So I'm gonna I want to play that for you uh, right now. Hopefully you'll hear it.
Okay, so Shuli Natan um, was really a kind of no-name singer before this, and then when Naomi Shemer asked her to kind of debut the song, this is a video I think that was done ob after, obviously, but she was asked to debut the song, uh, and she did. And uh, people aren't sure why she was asked in particular to do it, uh, but she did, and it's, uh, I mean, it's beautiful, uh, and, the, and it's a very powerful song. Um, but now I'm going to blow your mind again. Does anyone know who this is? Uh, Judith actually just chatted. Um, yep. And what is what is his connection to Naomi Shemer? This guy Paco Abanez. Uh, he wrote Spanish. the music. Ah, very good. So Judith, right? Is that, I'm sure I'm, is that Judith? I'm assuming. Yes. Very good. Okay, thank yes, you. Yes, so, I I even heard it. I you did hear. It. It. Interesting. I so Paco Abanez is a Spanish musician, um, and he came to Israel in 1962 to give a concert. And he played a, a melody that I want to play for you right now. And you'll tell me if you, uh, if you recognize any of it. Again, this is 1962. So hopefully you can hear the melody Yushalayim Michelle Sahavi in this. Mm. Five years earlier. Yep. He came to Israel in 1962. Naomi Shemer was at that concert, and she only admitted on her deathbed to a close friend of hers, basically doing, trying to do teshuva for it. <laughs> um, everyone had accused her of doing it. She always denied it. She denied it. Um, but it was really actually on her deathbed where she, she, um, she confessed uh, to a friend of hers, another composer, um, where she, she, took, she, she took responsibility, she apologized, and she wanted the announcement to be made uh, after she passed away, that she actually had kind of taken it from, from, this, uh, from this individual. Um, so... Um, Again, does that take away from who she was? No, she was still, uh, she wrote some other very famous, Al Kolela, of course, is one of her other famous ones, uh, as, well as, as well as many, many other. Um, but she certainly uh, goes down as probably the most the famous, uh, perhaps even influential uh, singer-songwriter uh, in Israeli history. And uh, when I teach the kids uh, about her, um, you know, I gotta talk a little bit about who she was. Uh, I actually um, have not spoken to them about, about Paco. Uh, that is only for me actually a recent, uh, a recent discovery that I thought was interesting when I was doing some research again for this. Um, but nonetheless, it's interesting. The words are still hers. The words are hers. Oh, no, of course. The words are hers. No. There's no question. Right. She wrote the words. And as, a matter of, just amazing. and as a matter of fact, uh, the, the song was played over and over during the Six-Day War, which is three weeks right. after the song was debuted, as a morale booster for really 
uh, and she even uh, she even performed it a few times for the soldiers themselves. Um, again, as a way of keeping up uh, keeping up hope and keeping up spirit during during the war. Uh, all right, uh, well, we're going to end with Arik Einstein, and we'll just listen to a couple of his famous songs. He was, uh, of course, Israeli singer, songwriter, actor, and screenwriter. He was a pioneer of Israeli rock music and was named the voice of Israel. Uh, through both high, high public and critical acclamation, Einstein is regarded as the greatest, most popular, the most influential Israeli artist of all time. Uh, different than Naomi Shemer, um, what's interesting about him is he actually got his start. Um, uh, he, was, uh, he was always into music as a kid, and then when the time came for him to go into the army, uh, he, had, um, uh, he, uh, he had an impairment, some kind of a vision impairment, apparently, and was not able to go in normally and um he tried out to be he still wanted to serve and he tried out to be in the army band um and became uh, he joined uh, the army official sahal i guess band and began his singing career there and um really traveled around the country uh for the army um, and then after he left uh, obviously becoming uh, more influential becoming more famous um and just want to play a couple of his uh of his songs that I'm sure you know, but it's just nice to listen to. Um, so, Anivata, very famous song. All right, I'll stop that one there. I always encourage my kids to make sure to go home and to uh, and to listen to more. I got one more for you. Uh, I got one more for you. Let's do. Uh, I hear some birds in the background, which is guess perfect for this song. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
<laughs> okay, so it's a beautiful song. Um, really beautiful song. And again, I always encourage everyone to always go and look up and listen to more. Um, so that's, that's kind of it. That's what I wanted to do with you today. Um, and I hope we I hope we learned something. Uh, Naftali hurts Imber, yeah. Naomi Shemer. Um, sometimes, uh, things, sometimes things don't appear to be what we think they are until we actually really learn about what they really are. So uh, <laughs> does, does it take away? I don't know. No, no. maybe, but it's still they're still powerful and still important and still um, yeah. still still nice. It's still really nice. So um, right, it's taking on like Hatikva, for example, is taking on a meaning, and you show I'm sure as a half as well. It's taking yeah. on meaning beyond. Way beyond, you know, the historical, you know, background to it. That's right. You know? Yep. Yep. That's right. So and we can still very much enjoy singing the songs. And you know, you see the the kids in the audience with Arik uh, yeah. Einstein's. You know, like they're all singing. They all know all the music, and they're loving it. You know, it's not just a song for the adults who are letting their children go off into the world and now right. the adults have the right. empty nest, but right. it's right. powerful for everyone. Really exactly. uh, beautiful. Anyway, all right, very good. Well, listen, Chag David, thank you. nice to see you. Uh, thank thank you. you for Great coming. And, well, uh, we can almost see your parents across the hill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Daniel is right across. Oh, that yeah, reminds me. Oh, I, I, should, I, mean, I should call him. I should call him, actually. Thank you for reminding me. I should give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.